You had your question? No. Uh, is it not wise? Is it halal to wear a to wear to wear just anything inside the masjid, or is it there is there like an etiquette or something? Is it halal to wear anything inside the masjid, or you could just wear anything? No, you cannot just wear anything in the masjid. It is what is upon a male, since you're a male, I'm mentioning that, to wear inside the masjid is the same thing that's upon him to wear outside the masjid. The sad reality is that some people have not accepted Islam. Okay? We say and we take the shahada, but we haven't accepted Islam. Meaning, we have not accepted to allow Islam or the orders of Allah to rule in our lives, even in apparent ways. So men walk around naked, meaning they show their front part and their back part, they wear tight pants, they don't cover their outer, and the outer of a man is from the navel to his knee, meaning that he's supposed to cover it, you know, with not showing the, his, the, 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 the shape of his body in that regard, okay? Just like a woman is, has to cover from head to toe, if she was wearing a skin tight or form fitting outfit, she would not be in jibbah. She would not be in a khimar or hijab. Men are no different. Walking around with the shape of their backside or the shape of their front side or even the shape of their legs showing their crotch area to the knee, this is haram for men to do. Haram. And Allah's Messenger said the outer for the men is from the navel to the knee. Does that make sense? No. And so for many men, they walk around here talking about they don't want their wives to go uncover. Oh, the sisters don't wear the niqab. They don't wear the khimar. But the men walk around here naked and showing themselves up. They wear shorts to the masjid. And this is despicable. This is showing a lack of respect. They wouldn't do that when they were in church. When, when they were kufar and they were going to the church, they wouldn't dare walk into a kanisa. Even today, they wouldn't walk into a kanisa like that. And even worse than that, they wear taut, short t-shirts and show the crack of their backside when they go make ruku and everything like that. It's this disgusting habit that you see people doing. But we live in a time where if you, you, we cannot force them to do it. We don't have any physical authority to grab them in a headlock and beat them up like we like to and throw them out of the masjid and say, don't do that. Of course, that's not where we start. We're still at the stage where we're trying to give them da'wah. And we're telling them, this is haram, this is haram, this is haram. And I say it again, this is haram. So I'm sorry that you have to see that, but don't accept it. It's disgusting. And there is no Muslim dress just when you come to the masjid. We see men putting on thobes as they get out their cars to get inside the, the masjid. And then they make fun of the ladies who put on the khimar right when they're getting, when they, they take off their khimar when you're coming out of Saudi Arabia from Hajj or Umrah. You see a lot of the ladies with niqab on. They take off their niqab when they get on. And they take off their khimars when they get on the plane. And they just look just like straight, you know, street ladies. Okay? And we say, oh, that's disgusting. But we men here in the United States, in Canada, in England, we put on our thobe. Some of the men come to the masjid, put the thobe on in the line. This is just a lack of Islam and a lack of understanding. May Allah give us shyness, Ya Yunus. May Allah make us shyness. We don't want to walk around naked. We wouldn't let our women walk around naked, but these men want to walk around naked. Okay? And may Allah put in their hearts a sense of, of, of responsibility to be men and not walk around here naked in this disgusting fashion. Yes, sir. Are the Jews and Sufis the same people? Are the Jews and Sufis the same thing? Alhamdulillah, that's a very interesting question. Some of the things that the Sufis do are correct in Islam. Okay? And it comes from what we call zuhud, which is ostentation, meaning uh, staying away and doing without the dunya, or having the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah in everything you do. This is a type of consciousness. And then some of the things that the Sufis do, take them totally out of Islam and makes them kuffar, okay? And some of the things the Sufis do make them devil worshippers, okay? So there's degrees that you see. So that some of the things you notice and you see them doing and you see the Jews doing, yes, they're similar to them in some things. But some of the things you see them doing, we do as well, that are from Islam and are correct. So we have to have strike a balance. 
We cannot throw all the things that the people that claim to sow up do out, but we have to distinguish those things that even though they call it to sow up, it's actually zuhd, and it's from the sunnah, okay? Even though they may call it to sow up. And then those other things, like I said, are totally incorrect. And we'll be learning and, and following up those things to show you the details thereof, inshallah, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There was a question from the Go ahead. It says, what advice for a revert sister to stay firm and his son with no support from the Muslim community to build more understanding and faith? Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. What advice for a revert sister to stay firm in Islam with no support from the Muslim community? I would say for her to move and come to a, move to a Muslim community that will give her support, okay? That's one thing. If she's whatever country she's in, try to find the, the, the neighborhood that there is a Muslim community that, unclick your fingers, that is more supportive of that. And also, if you cannot move because of financial reason, then contact us online and we will try to give you moral support as much as we can and, and also give you advice in how to do things. And we can, com we can communicate online and have an online community helping each other in ways that we weren't able to even five years ago. Inshallah ta'ala. So stay in touch and so we won't be without any Muslim communal, communal support, but we can do what we can do. And I would advise the revert sister to learn the Quran and the basics of fiqh. And that would be in, there are some couple of books that she can read. One of them is the concise book of fiqh or Mulakhasat al Shari'iyah by Sheikh Fawzan. The other one is by Abdul Azim Bedoui. And I have written a poem called Out Outlining Fiqh in first grade fiqh. These will probably be better to help you understand it from a Western perspective, and we'll deal with that after Ramadan to expose you to those particular works, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah knows best. Any other questions? Okay, no, that, that's it. That's it? Okay. Let me no, just plus, check. Abu Anis wants to know what book is on your map. Which, oh, my lap? Ha, ha, ha. Tell him, this book, Abu Anis, this book is Tafsir al-Munir, is from Sheikh Zuhaili, okay? And it's, it's fil aqidah wa sharia wa minhaj from my sheikh, Sheikh Zuhail. It's in aqidah, sharia, and minhaj. And it's one of the books I mentioned earlier that I use. And what I was doing, I was just making sure I, I, I was writing my books, as, as, as he knows. And so I was checking what notes I had written on those ayah. So that's what I was doing. I was, check, I was checking my notes to see what I had said about that. Okay? to make sure that I covered everything. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And remember, for those people who have a problem with giving zakah and sadaqah, Allah, Allah says that he is in the aun of the abd, as long as the slave, the abd, is in the aun of his brother. That the, the Allah is helping the slave as long as the slave is helping his brother. And as far as the one who has problem with riya showing off, he should remember this dua. Allahu Allahu Rabbi la ushriku bihi shay'a. Shay'a. Allah, Allah is my Lord. Allah and only Allah. That's what the ta'kid is. Allahu Allahu Rabbi. Allah and only Allah is my Lord. And I'm not going to give it anybody anything besides Allah. Wa la ushriku bihi shay'a. So when you show off, who are you showing off to? Allah. Allah. That's who you're showing off to. Because you know Allah, and you know, Inna Allah bima ta'amaluna basir. The fact is that whatever you're doing, Allah sees you. So do it good for Allah to see you. Okay? Show off to Allah, knowing that Allah sees you. And that's the 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 height, the, 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 the definition of ihsan. And ta'budullah ka'annaka tara. To worship Allah as if you see him. And though you know you can't see him, you know that he sees you. So you perform for Allah. You get it? And you transfer, Shaytan tries to transfer that to people. So you see people and you show up for them. No. Imagine you know that Allah sees you. So you act and you do. And you perform your salah like you know that Allah is looking at you. Okay? 
أقول قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته